okay so uh, today we will be discussing about errors in sample see if we are trying to do some sort of statistical study then we are going to be like asking questions to group of people and from that group of people we can apply the result on the entire population and in this obviously we are about to commit few mistakes an unavoidable error that we get just from doing the study in this way and so we are going to talk about different kinds of errors and then the ways that errors can occur so that we can avoid doing them when we are designing a statistical study okay so error in sampling errors in a sample is that arises in a data collection process as a result of taking a sample from a population rather than using the whole population even after taking care in selecting sample there may be chances that the true value is not equal to the observed value because estimation is based upon a part of population not on the whole hence sampling gives rise to certain errors known as errors in sample okay so see when a researcher is choosing a sample to collect a data so instead of collecting the data from the entire population he will choose a sub population a sample okay and in that some mistake will be done in the result means there will be you know differences in the observed value and the actual value okay now this we can understand in a clear manner just uh, to by observing this image okay so suppose if a researcher he collects the data from the entire population then we can say that error will be zero okay so whenever survey or research is done on the entire population okay not sample on the entire population this is known as census okay census means survey or research done on the entire population and in census will have zero error but we cannot collect the information from the entire population may be due to time constraint or cost constraint so what we do is we draw sample and then we start collecting the data now in this image you can see two population image 1 and image 2 both have got same number of population but from image 1 or you can say example 1 we are selecting this much amount of sample and in second image or second example we are selecting a bit bigger sample okay so what makes the difference here if the sample size is small then the error is likely to be occur more okay smaller sample bigger error and if the sample size is big then the error will be less okay now for understanding thing we take an example suppose our target population is 10000 people and if you are collecting a data from a sample of just 500 people you cannot say that opinion of 500 people is same that even 9500 people could give so in this case we can say that sampling error is more because here this sample selected is very small but suppose instead of this uh, suppose from 10000 population if suppose you are collecting 8000 people for sample here also we cannot say that the remaining 2000 people opinion is same as that of the 8000 people but we can say that error has been reduced because the sample size is more that is called a sampling error now errors in sample is basically of two types first one is sampling error and second one is non sampling error the difference between the sampling and a non sampling error is like if you are asking a group of people to try to find out what the entire population of people thinks about something like you are never going to get a exact answer like for example if you want if if you want to say exactly 50% of indians prefer masala dosa over idli sambar and 50% indians will prefer idli sambar over masala dosa you will not get this exact figure of 50% like suppose you uh, you ask 100 people okay if you ask 100 people would you get exactly 50 people saying they'll prefer masala dosa over idli vada and 50 people saying they'll prefer idli vada over masala dosa 
it's very unlikely right you are not probably going to get exactly what you would expect no matter what this is called a sampling error one more thing one more example if you want to know anything about the karnataka university student like you would have to ask every single karnataka university student if you wanted to find out exact percentage of students who for example failed or passed but instead since we take a sample we might get something close if we ask enough people we will get something that's close to what we get say a right answer but we are not necessarily going to get exactly the right answer okay we will get a close answer not a right answer near to right answer but not exactly the right answer so even if we do everything like we are always going to have some error that's called a sampling error okay now coming to the second one that is a non sampling error non sampling error is the error that we get from doing something wrong so if we make mistakes in how we are asking the question like for example if you are doing a convenience sampling when we just uh, we like i'm just gonna put a post on my instagram feed that is called a non sampling error non sampling errors comes out of mistakes so if we ask the question wrong or if we ask a wrong people or don't get a representative sample all of these introduces a non sampling error okay so a sampling error just comes from the fact that we are sampling they were taking a sample rather than asking everyone okay so the difference between the observed uh, value and the actual value that is sampling error whereas non sampling error is any kind of error about mistakes that we make okay now next we'll see some of the mistakes that may occur while sampling okay first of all we'll uh, check out the mistakes of sampling error so first mistake will be size and adequacy see whenever we are selecting a sample a very important factor here is to understand what should be our sample size if suppose our population is a 1 lakh people and we are selecting just 500 people in the sample means such a small sample size it would not represent the entire population properly it will be a useless sample it would be a non representative sample therefore the very first sampling error it would arise if the sample is not adequate sample size should be relevant now on what basis we should select a sample size now this basically depends on first of all the purpose of study the requirement and even the knowledge of investigator all these things put together and then we can decide the sample size we don't have a rule for it we need to decide it so it is essential of a good sample that your sample size should be adequate second mistake that we can do is representation like in your population there will be people of different variety great variation of population like in your population will have people with different age gender size religion caste race income class etc and same kind of variation should reflect in your sample also which will make it a representative sample see whatever characteristic is there in your population same characteristic with same proportion should be there in your sample also if 50% of your population is women then in sample also 50% of the population should be a woman this will make the sample a good representative sample that will minimize the error next thing is independence in a sample one item should not depend upon an another item like for example there is a dance school and a dance teacher need to select two girls for some kind of dance competition now among those two girls one girl the name of the girl is x okay so that x what that x told you know i i perform i'll participate in the dance competition only if my friend should also join this part uh, this program okay so this girl x she insists for her friend's participation but the dance teacher wants only the girl x not her friend because that friend does not knows dancing she is non representative so this thing should not occur in a sampling 
an item or a member of a sample should not depend on an another member okay now last mistake that can be done in a sampling error is homogeneity like for example if suppose you are undertaking a study on weight if you are measuring the weight in kilogram then you need to measure the weight of all the items in the sample in kilogram if you are measuring the weight in pounds then you need to need to measure weight of all the items in the sample in pound if you are measuring the weight in grams then you need to measure weights of all the items in the sample in grams so you need to maintain this homogeneity okay and it will also be helpful in comparison analysis okay so homogeneity need to be maintained it shouldn't be like few members you are weighing them in kilogram few members are being weighed in grams few members in pounds this kind of uh thing should not be taking place homogeneity has to be maintained okay next our sampling error are again of two types okay first one is biased error and second one is unbiased error so what these things are we'll check out one by one first talking about biased sampling error when the selection of a sample is based on the personal prejudice or bias of the investigator then the results are prone to bias errors such as if the investigator is required to collect the sample using the simple random sampling and instead he used the non random sampling then personal prejudice is introduced in the research process that will lead to the biased errors okay now biased error is nothing but if a person commits a mistake intentionally this is called as biased here bias sampling error is if a researcher purposefully because of his personal benefits if he commits a mistake while choosing a sample then it is called as a biased error like for example if suppose selection of sample has to be decide is decided that it has to be done by using a simple random technique okay so what the investigator did he started doing the simple random technique and he started collecting the sample but after some times means after, uh, he has collected few samples and after some time he met a person who is very convenient to him someone who can give him right answers means the person can give answers to which the researcher feels he is correct so then he immediately adopted a non random sampling like convenient sampling and he started collecting the data from him see what was supposed to be done the investigator was supposed to collect the sample by using simple random technique and he started doing that okay but after some time he adopted convenient sample technique technique okay from random sampling he jumped into convenient sampling so then this is said to be a sampling error or you can say a biased sampling error okay uh, because because of his personal the investigator's personal convenience he has committed a mistake that is nothing but a biased error next we'll talk about an unbiased sampling error the unbiased errors arise due to a chance that is the investigator has not intentionally tampered with the sample and that the difference between the population and sample have occurred by chance these errors arise due to chance difference between the members of population included in the sample and those not included see what it says is the unbiased error is nothing but without any intention in the mind or to commit a mistake the error may occur by chance that is nothing but an unbiased sampling error suppose like suppose if the investigator not intentionally tampers with the sample the difference between the population and the sample which have occurred by chance is nothing but the unbiased sample like uh, just we gave an example okay like here the population is there and among this population suppose we have selected 80% of the population as our sample so we have selected a huge sample size and we are expecting that our error will be very much minimized but what happens you know and in an unbiased error sampling error which occurs by chance by mistake so an unbiased error error occurs when the left out people 
like this 20% people, the left out people who are not been selected as sample, if their opinion differs with the opinion of the sample, then we can say that an unbiased error have occurred. Okay. So, this is a thing in an unbiased error. The remaining 20% uh, uh, people of the population who were not selected in the sample, their opinion is totally different with that of the 80% people. It may happen. By chance, it may happen. So, this is known as unbiased errors. Now, next we'll jump into the second type that is the non-sampling error. Non-sampling error is an error arise from human error such as error in problem identification, method or procedure used etc. Non-sampling error is the error that arises in a data collection process as a result of factors other than taking a sample. Okay. Now, non-sampling error. The name it itself says the error which has occurred not in the process of selecting a sample but apart from taking the sample okay error has might, might have been arise in processing of the data okay so this is known as a non sampling error we also call it as a human error which occur either due to problem identification or you select a method or a procedure used okay now this non sampling error have got types we have got three types of non sampling error they are response error, respondent error and interviewer error. So, we will check out these things one by one. First of all, talking about the response error. Response error is that, if suppose you gave a questionnaire to a person in the sample and the person who gave the answer, after you collect back uh, the questionnaire, when you see the answers which is given by the respondent, if suppose for one or two questions, there is lack of clarity in the answer which is given. Like for example, just you have mentioned to fill the phone number and if he has mentioned just 9 digit, there is an error over here with the response which is given by the respondent. So, such an error is known as response error. Second thing is respondent error. It is nothing but the person who fills the questionnaire if he is giving an untrue picture or if he is saying something false information for the question which the researcher asked is called as a respondent error. Even also suppose in a questionnaire there are 10 questions and among those 10 questions nearly 40% or 60% of the people have not answered 2 questions out of the 10 questions. It is also known as respondent error because the respondent have not responded in a proper manner. So, we will not have a clear idea of the, of the thing, of the concept. Lastly, we have got interviewer error. Interviewer is a researcher or the agent who asks the question to the respondent. If he himself lacks some experience and training to ask the question, if knowingly or unknowingly, if he commits any mistake while asking the question and the understanding problem would occur between the interviewer and the respondent, then we can say this error as an interviewer error. Next, we will check out some of the reasons for non-sampling error. Okay. So, as I told you in the previous slide only, why this sort of response or respondent or interviewer error will occur? If there is a lack of training and uh, if uh, there are lack of qualified investigators to ask the question to the people or the respondent, this, then this kind of errors would arise. Next, if the question itself framed is wrong and wrong questions are answered, then this kind of error may occur. Apart from this, if there is due, uh, due to incomplete coverage, if not all the questions have been asked, then also such kind of non-sampling error may occur. Next, if the investigator itself is biased in asking the question or if he makes the patient's expression or his attitude changes with the person while asking the question, then because of this biasness also, non-sampling error may occur. Next, if the question frame itself is not very clear, it is very vague, vague, then also such kind of sampling error may occur. 
If the list of population which you made in order to select a sample, if that list itself is wrong, so this kind of non-sampling error may occur. If there is a wrong method of asking a question and even wrong calculation also while processing the data by the interviewer, then because of this wrong method and wrong calculations also, non-sampling error may occur. Lastly, the important thing is not everybody is so well to recall every past events and fill the questionnaire or to answer the question which researcher asks. If the respondent fails to remember the past events and if he gets a false information and not remembering it properly, then also such kind of non-sampling error may occur. So lastly, we will check out some kind of comparison between sampling and non-sampling error. First of all, what do you mean by a sampling error? Sampling error is a type of error that occurs due to the sample selected does not perfectly represent the population of interest. This is sampling error. Now, what do you mean by a non-sampling error? An error which occurs due to sources other than sampling while conducting the survey activities is known as a non-sampling error. Next, what is the cause of a sampling error? The cause is deviation between the sample mean and population mean. Whereas the cause for a non-sampling error is deficiency and analysis of data. Next occurrence of sampling error is only when sample is selected. Whereas non-sampling error may occur both in sample and in census as well. Next sample size for sampling error Possibility of error reduced with the increase in sample size. Whereas for non-sampling error, it has nothing to do with the sample size. Okay, so this was all about our today's video regarding the errors in sampling. I hope you people found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.